have actually and what a lucky morning we have had. Iron, shadow and now the bird I have spoke about originally at the start of the sunrise safari, although admittedly somewhat shy this morning, but our wonderful ground hornbill trio. And this is the trio that we see regularly on quarantine in the open areas and this is a particularly magnificent bird. Turkey sized, roughly turkey sized, although obviously with a much, much larger bull. And specialized snake and insect catchers. Oh, somebody's coming in. Two, looks like two males here. Hello, you two. What are you up to? Massively powerful bulls, and they're digging through a pile of dung, searching for dung beetles and dung beetle larvae. Now this is a basically a breakfast buffet for them. Look at them tossing the dung from side to side. And one beetle after another is biting the dust. The hornbills are having a marvellous time. Uh, for our new viewers, this is one of the most endangered species that, that we see. We're fortunate in that we actually see them relatively regularly. And there seems to, this trio seems to have moved into this particular patch. This is the bird I was looking for at the start of the sunrise safari, the one that calls Gugug, Gugugug, Gugug, Gugugug. Beautiful, beautiful call. Uh, studies from a couple of years ago have suggested that there are in fact only around 1,400 of these incredible birds left in the wild. Um, the lumber might be recovering slightly due to seriously concerted conservation efforts. And just recently, Brent and myself went on a trip to Buffles Hook to go and visit some friends there. And we were treated to an incredible sighting of a nesting female ground hornbill tucked away in her hollow in a marula tree. And that in is a rare sight indeed. And that's why I've been looking for these hornbills in the hope that perhaps we find a nest site for you. Because there's nothing as special as watching something like that. These ground hornbills it can take years to breed. They take seven years to reach sexual maturity. They mate for life when they do mate and they are very very picky breeders. And what I mean by that is if something disturbs them, if something in some way, if their tree gets pushed over by an elephant or something upsets them in some way, perhaps a visit by a snake, they can take years to find a suitable nesting site and breed once again. It's one of the reasons why they have become, obviously humans have played a massive role, but their slow breeding process is one of the reasons why they have become a relatively endangered, oh, definitely an endangered species. And good morning to Justin S. He wants to know, just in terms of giving you a sense of scale, if we were to go and stand next to a ground hornbill, um, how tall would they be in comparison to us? Uh, Justin, he, their heads would probably come up to just above my knee. Uh, so I'm five foot seven to give you a little bit of perspective in terms of scale. So I'm five foot seven, and the hornbill, yes, would probably come up to just above my knee. They're very cheeky birds. They learn to be cheeky. Some of you might have traveled through through the Kruger and encountered them before. And more than one tourist has left um, with their deposit no longer intact on their rental cars as a result of ground hornbills coming scurrying towards them and attacking their cars. Um, I'm not sure if it's a reflection-based thing, because hornbills, of course, are notorious for attacking their own reflections. They're lovely birds, um, but they are... They do have a tendency to to attack their own reflection. They, they, they don't team. They don't seem to learn that their reflection is not, in fact, a rival hornbill. Look at them. They're having the most, the best breakfast ever. But what I'll try and do, perhaps we. I mean, I haven't done this for a long time, but perhaps we could do it with the hornbills. When they move off, I'll go and stand where they were where they were standing, and we'll try and get a sort of an idea. Um, next to some of the trees, surrounding trees and so on, just how tall they are. Obviously I'm not going to go and scare them away. So let's, yeah, then let's think of sort of from there. If you can take a screenshot now with their heads up and then I will go and stand where they have been standing and we can get a comparison. 
Oh, Candy Boy, I'm just trying to establish whether or not this is in fact a mating pair of hornbills. I've just seen one feeding the other. Now, what it could be, because looking under that one's chin, there seems to be a little bit of a blue patch, but it's so bulgy, I don't think it's a female. I think we've got two males here. The females have a very clear blue patch underneath their chins. Now, we have two males. The third one has gone running off, and that might have been the female. It's difficult to tell because she disappeared. Um, but you can you can see relatively clearly on the females. There's the, the pouch underneath their chins is, or the gula, the gula pouch, is not as prominent in the females. Their, their bills are not quite as well developed and they have a blue patch under their chins. Now, I'm not sure if the female wandered off, but what it could be, because ground hornbills are complicated creatures, um, and they live in quite complicated family structures. It could be that, in fact, the female is nesting, and what we're seeing here is her mate and adult offspring. The one on the right is slightly older than the one on the left. You can see it just in terms of the development of the gula flap and the the color of it it's much darker red so that the one on the right is definitely a mature mature male so what happens with with ground hornbills is that they are cooperative breeders so if their adult offspring will actually stay with mom and dad even once they've reached adulthood and they'll help mom and dad with their breeding come this way sorry i just seen the third one emerge but I'm not quite sure. Now I've lost track of which ones which might actually have... Th Look at this. Let's just watch their dynamics for a second. One's begging. Hmm. We might have a dispersal group here. All begging from each other. The one is clearly much larger. The one in the middle is clearly the alpha male, clearly the fully grown male. But the other two look like they're males as well. So what it could be is a dispersal group they do, or it could be that the ground hornbills have had two male sons and that they are still around learning to do the whole the whole child raising thing or chick raising thing. It's a fascinating structure because it's research has shown that unless offspring actually stick around and help the adults to raise oh hold on sorry 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 I've got to be on the game drive channel there's just been an interesting update